Uh, what, a, what an entertaining game. Uh, obviously, shoot, good win for us for a lot of different re reasons. Um, probably the biggest one, even the series, uh, season series 2-2 with those guys. Um, but we got a lot of great performances from a lot of different guys. Um, e even, you know, a, you know, a guy like Kessler, uh, Dorte, um, those guys weren't even expecting to play tonight. We throw them in the game and, you know, whether they gave us two minutes or five minutes, uh, we needed somebody to step up and, and play as hard as they could and, and those guys did. And even taking it the other way, uh, JaVale was expected to play and at the last second we decided to go small. Um, he's just been a phenomenal, phenomenal teammate. He was great about it tonight. He was leading us on the bench in cheers. Uh, Pre-game, you know, he gets the guys hype, even post-game in the locker room. I mean, you're talking about phenomenal teammate in JaVale McGee. He was, he was huge even though he didn't play a second for us. Uh, and, you know, it's a testament because he's an NBA champion, been to the finals multiple times. And I hope all of our guys, especially our young guys, take notice of his demeanor and his connectivity. Uh, to our group as a whole. Um, but a lot of great performances. Uh, Davion was fantastic off the bench on both ends of the floor. Um, uh, Kev, Kev led us in rebounding. You know, we, we bit on Kevin uh, about rebounding and defending, and he did a phenomenal job in both of those areas for us tonight. <clears throat> uh, obviously, Domas, with the 13 it says Foxy with the 29 points, especially a couple threes, a couple of timely threes, uh, we're huge. Uh, Keegan, you know, you're not stopping Steph Curry um, at all. Uh, he's obviously a first ballot Hall of Famer, one of the all-time greatest. Uh, Steph has 18 or something like that in the first, and, and we just decided to try to match Keegan's minutes with him to see if Keegan can make them work, and they just throw a lot of different things at you offensively. Steph's a screener, and then Steph's a ball handler, and then Steph's coming off a flare, and then he's coming off a pin down. Just, they do all types of things to get you confused, and they did, but he has 18 in the first and 15 the rest of the game. And <clears throat> again, you're not stepping, stopping him. You, you just hope to, 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 to make him work, and. And we thought Keegan did his best to try to make it work uh, those last three quarters. Um, but, you know, lastly, I, 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 HB, <laughs> HB was huge. Um, you know, as you guys know, throughout, throughout most of this year, I don't think I called a single play for him. And these last two games, these last two games alone, wait, shoot, just tonight, I called more plays for him tonight than I did the entire year combined, you know. And uh, so I got to give him his due respect because he's come up big for us. He came up big in the last game against uh, Atlanta down the stretch. Uh, he came up huge tonight. Obviously, he was aggressive throughout the course of the game. And uh, he kept us either in the game or extended the lead. Uh, and then down the stretch when we looked a little out of sorts. I just called his number, put him put him in a spot that he's very familiar with. And he had two huge, huge buckets for us. Uh, on top of that, big stop on Kaminga uh, on the other end of the floor. Uh, even Keegan had a great block. Foxy and Kevin's read, the blitz. Uh, Steph uh, at the, on that last play, just really good basketball on both ends of the floor at times, uh, most times, for us to close a tight game down the stretch versus a very, very good team. And, you know, I've said this to you guys that those losses on the road really hurt, but they made us all self-reflect, starting with me on what we need to do better down the stretch on both ends. And uh, it's starting to show a little bit. So I, I, I'm extremely proud uh, of our guys finding a way to get the win tonight, a tight ball game. First, very good team.
Yeah, Mike, I was, I was waiting for you to, to reference the, the Harrison defensive stop at the end. A lot's going to be made about the offense over 43 for, sure. for both these teams. Not what we really, really saw in the playoffs, but for the, the, the game to end with the HB stop and then Fox and, and Herter kind of forcing that Steph turnover there at the end, is that kind of the icing on the cake or cherry on top to win a game with two big defensive plays? For, for sure, because, you know, everybody says, hey, you got to make plays offensively. You got to go get a bucket. You got to make the pass and do this or do that. You can make a play defensively, and you know Kaminga's a heck of a young player. He's obviously going to be really, really, really good, and he's been a handful. He was a handful for us all night. Um, but HB just walled up and led with his chest like we talked to him, and he made a defensive play. It's a hell of a play versus a very, very good young player that kind of had his way with us at times tonight. Huge. And then, you know, Kev, we didn't necessarily say we were going to blitz at the time. If our guys got an opportunity, they know Steph's beat us before, that we don't want him to beat us. And so Kevin to react the way he did, Fox to continue to pursue and, and, and blitz Steph and see if somebody else was going to beat us. That was a, a, a huge defensive play that those guys made. So those two plays were just as big as HB's two buckets when we needed them. What led to that last minute decision to not go in JaVale's direction, and how do you feel like that small ball lineup did? Uh, the small ball, li a small ball lineup did well, you know. Uh, JaVale's been playing well for us, and um, it, it just, sometimes you just get a gut feel. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with stats, analytics, numbers, anything like that. You just get a gut feel, and they were small, and so we said, hey, you know what? Let's let us go small. Let's go small. Uh, we could switch if we need to. Steph was still on the floor at the time when we usually bring JaVale in. Uh, Draymond's a handful uh, with the basketball. <coughs> and uh, we went with it. And we thought it worked out okay in the first half, and so we went with it again in the second half. Coach Brown, I uh, uh, probably shouldn't say it, uh, the unlikely heroes, but they were the unlikely heroes. Herder, Barnes, and David and Mitchell. Cause yeah. Uh, <coughs> I think he made his first three shots. I think they were behind the yard. Can you talk about his play? I don't think you mentioned uh, Damian at this point. No, I did. I, Damian was huge for us. He was one of the first guys that, that I mentioned. He, he was big for us uh, on both ends of the floor. He stepped in. He looked really good shooting a three ball. Uh, he was active for us defensively. He pushed the pace. He got downhill a couple of times and sprayed the ball. So I, I, I thought uh, Damian was really good for us. And he's been good since... I've uh, put him back in the lineup. <clears throat> Coach, I, uh, I asked this to De'Aaron earlier. He was saying how he doesn't consider playing against the Warriors a rivalry, but given the close proximity between the two teams and the fact that you guys play some really competitive games, is it safe to say this could be a rivalry between the two teams? It, uh, maybe, maybe it could. You know, right now, obviously, we're, we're I mean, they've accomplished so much. It, you know, and. I don't know, the last 10 years or whatever it's been, you know, with, with eight years, whatever it's been, with the four or five championships and, you know, deep playoff runs. <clears throat> so, you know, as time goes on and we continue to get more competitive with them and, you know, maybe we, we beat them in the playoffs or something like that, then that may add more credibility to it, you know. Uh, but we're trying to carve our own path right now and their path is already carved. I mean they they know they, they can play better probably than what they're playing now or they feel they can or whatever it is. And they will at the end of the day, especially when you have you know, three sure three Hall of Famers and Steph Clay and Draymond, those guys are still high, high level basketball players and you got a Hall of Fame coach and Steve. So um, we still have you know we still have some things that we got to take care of first before it's probably a full-blown line. They've, they've been fun games for the fans. Though. I know it's not you know, your choice in that final uh, closing section, but it looked like they almost took a time out a couple of times. Uh, you know, on the did? No, they, they almost took a couple of times, uh, a time out a couple of times. As a defensive coach, would you prefer, you know, the time out to, to get the subs you want to set your defense, or, or do you like going, you know, having kind of have to scramble? Which is there a preference 
But, you know, offensively, you always like to, to put your opponent in a scramble situation. Um, so you usually let it go. But uh, defensively, yes, you know, you prefer to talk about some things. But, you know, I kind of said this, alluded to this earlier, some of our tough losses, you know, down the stretch where we didn't finish really made us look in the mirror starting with me and, and, and try to clean some things up to get across to our guys to put them in better positions down the stretch. And um, that was a read for Kevin to blitz Steph. And, it, you know, because we've spent a lot of time on it with these tough losses, our guys knew exactly what should have happened um, when they were put in certain positions. So I, I take my hat off to to our group for responding to the long film sessions, the walkthroughs, the teachings, and everything that we did to try to clean up our end of game stuff. Jason. Uh, Mike HB talked about like five guys working in concert and, and not being attached to, to who gets credit and yeah. how you know some nights you may get shots, some nights you may just run to the corner or set screens or, or whatever. Just. What can you say about his level of, of professionalism and, and readiness and kind of the, the, the I don't know, the, the path he's had this year in getting to this point where now he's getting some shots and, and maximizing those opportunities? But again, I go back to not just stuff that happens on the court, but even throwing a guy like Dorte or Kessler in when they didn't think they were going to play. You know, we threw Kessler in in the second half. Um, and then even a guy like JaVale still up and cheering his teammates on um, when we told him he was going to play this morning, you know. So um, the connectivity of the group has a lot to do with it. Um, HB is, is a guy that has uh, been extremely professional the entire time I've been around him. You can go back, even go back, going back to the playoffs last year when there were times that I set him. And whenever his number was called, he went out and tried to do what he can to help us win. You know, that's that right there, you know, the way he carries himself, as positive as he is with his teammates, um, the way he tries to hold everybody accountable, uh, it, it's all great leadership stuff. And, you know, he's, he's definitely much appreciated because um, he's helped us in a lot of ways that uh, you know, people outside won't know. Coach, you talked a little bit about Keegan, um, and I think before the game you used the word unfair when you were referring to the kind of defensive assignments that he's had this season. Uh, he struggled a little bit offensively to start the game, but how do you see him, I guess, balancing uh, both ends of the floor? Like, he, I think he had, he drew a charge and then he had a big block uh, in, early in the game. So how do you kind of see him balancing that on the defensive and the offensive side of the floor? He's doing a great job for, for a young guy. Um, you know, again, I mean, you look at a guy like Jonathan Kaminga, and this is what year, what year is this? Year three for him. And they're just now asking him to step up. We asked Keegan to step up as he was walking off the Iowa campus, you know. So um, he's handled it extremely well. Uh, you wish he had time to develop, like Kaminga and, and Moody and some other young guys uh, around the league. And some people may say, well, look at the young fella in, in Orlando. Uh, the, the difference is, you know, they weren't in playoffs last year. You know, and pressure's not there when you're coming out of college or you're coming into the league right now to be an integral factor on both ends of the floor to help make the playoffs and make a playoff run. So Keegan's done it fantastic job handling it um, and we're going to continue to put that pressure on him because he's shown he can handle it.